Olá igreja, sejam muito bem-vindos à nossa reunião online Que bom que você está conectado conosco Vamos juntos nesse momento abrir o nosso coração e adorar Jesus Vamos lá Ao refletir eu reconheço Nos dias bons e maus que já vivi Sempre estiveste aqui Estás na dor e na promessa Se pelo fogo minha fé passar Na fornalha estarás O futuro não sei o que trará Mas o passado Nós te adoramos, nós te exaltamos, ó oh Deus. Senhor Jesus, nós te agradecemos nesse momento. Nós te agradecemos que, independente das circunstâncias que nós estejamos vivendo, o Senhor está no controle de tudo. Nós te agradecemos por essa graça, nós te agradecemos pelo teu sacrifício, Jesus. A igreja, te convido a cantar nesse momento. Vamos declarar juntos.
mais uma vez Mesmo com falhas Ele nos ama e nos alcança Cantamos Mesmo com falhas E com fraquezas O meu tesouro Em ti está Minha vida entrego Serei teu valor ¿Cómo están? Bienvenidos a un domingo más en Hilson en línea. Quiero darle la bienvenida a todos ahí en San Pablo, en Monterrey y acá en Buenos Aires. Qué lindo es tenerte conectados con nosotros. Así es, me encanta que podemos conectar un domingo más en lo que será un día extraordinario. Y creo que también, mi amor, tenemos que empezar a incluir en este primer bloque un saludo a aquellos que forman parte de nuestros grupos iniciales en Montevideo, así Uruguay. Es. Bienvenidos. Porque sé bienvenidos. que no solamente se están conectando al segundo bloque. Así que los saludamos. Gracias por estar con nosotros. 
parte de nuestra familia continental y también les saludamos y damos la bienvenida a aquellos que no forman parte de Hilton en América uh -huh. Latina, pero que se conectan con nuestras reuniones. Qué bueno que estás conectado con nosotros. Valoramos tu tiempo y confiamos que hoy para todos nosotros Dios tiene algo súper especial. Así que bienvenidos una vez más. Espero que estén usando el chat ahí, charlando entre todos. Contanos de dónde sos. Eh, ¿Cómo fue tu semana? No sé, ahí habla. habla ¿Qué desayunaste? Estamos... ¿Qué vas a almorzar? <risa> lo Buenísimo. que quieras. Pero sin distraer a nadie. ¿eh? Así Tenemos es. que estar enfocados. Pero a mí me encanta la manera que estamos adorando, aprecio un montón a nuestro equipo creativo y todo lo que como equipo estamos logrando en medio de esta época y seguiremos Amén. avanzando hacia adelante, creyendo que para nosotros como una iglesia local, lo mejor de Dios está por venir. Y vamos a orar creyendo eso. Lucy, creo Así que es. tenés en tus manos, mi amor, un montón de peticiones. Muchas peticiones que recibimos durante la semana, sé que vas a ver ahí en la pantalla, en la pantalla eh, distintas peticiones, pero acá tenemos a alguien que le está pidiendo al Señor oración por sanidad de su mamá, otra persona prosperidad en sus negocios, Amén. hay otra persona que le está pidiendo, eh, está pidiendo oración por restauración en su familia, eh, que Dios me sorprenda en mi cumpleaños, está Buenísimo. orando esta persona, muy, muy Buenísimo. bueno. Buenísimo, feliz encantó. cumpleaños. Feliz cumpleaños, por el embarazo de mi esposa, sabiduría para tomar decisiones, así que vamos a estar orando. Sí. Eh, quiero también, puedo, si puedo eh, leerte algo cortito, que el Señor me estaba hablando esta semana acerca de ser valientes, de ser fuertes y valientes. En Deuteronomio 31.6 que dice, sean fuertes y valientes, no teman ni se asusten ante esas naciones, Amén. pues el Señor su Dios siempre los acompañará, nunca los dejará ni los abandonará. Y eso es algo que el Señor ha estado hablando en mi vida durante eh, estas dos semanitas. Y siento de parte de Dios que es una palabra para tu vida en este momento. Sé fuerte y valiente porque el Señor está contigo. Amén. Así que vamos a orar juntos y creer de que Dios va a traer esa, ese milagro, esas respuestas que estás esperando en el nombre de Jesús. Amén. A mí me encanta, perdón, a mí me encanta verte leer la, la Escritura porque lo declarás. Me encanta tus movimientos, son movimientos es, es movimiento de, de, fe, autoridad, de autoridad, declarando la palabra, eso sé me encanta. fuerte y valiente, Buenísimo. Sé, sea fochi y corajoso. Ah, gloria a Dios, estamos señor, hablando portugués el, el también. El Señor está contigo. Sí, ¿Ah? está con vos. Amén. Gloria Amén. a Dios, vamos a orar. Vamos a orar. ¿Quién vamos va a orar? orar? No sé, ¿quieres orar? Yo oro, dale, dale yo dale. oro. Señor, gracias. Gracias por las promesas de tu palabra. Gracias por tu fidelidad, gracias por tu bondad y porque en medio de esta época estás obrando en medio de tu pueblo. Oramos por estas peticiones que Lucy acaba de mencionar y todas las otras que hemos recibido. Oramos por cada persona que está conectado con este momento, papá, conoce su necesidad, su desafío, lo que está enfrentando y en el nombre de Jesús. Depositamos nuestra fe en ti creyendo que la respuesta está siendo desatada en el cielo para que nosotros, tus hijos, la podamos recibir acá en la tierra. Que se haga tu voluntad, que venga tu reino, que tu nombre sea glorificado y que tus hijos puedan testificar de tu mano que está obrando en medio de sus situaciones. Te damos gracias, papá, porque confiamos que la respuesta está en camino en el nombre de Jesús. Amén. Amén. Buenísimo, buenísimo. Perfecto. Perfecto. ¿Tenés, ¿Tenés agradecimientos? Lo tenés vos, mi amor. Yo tengo los agradecimientos. Por ¿Cómo? eso siempre te necesito a mi lado. Así es. Sin vos estoy perdido. ¿Qué puedo decir? Sí, sin vos no soy nada. Es verdad. Gracias, mi amor, gracias. No, 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 pero sí, también, también recibimos eh, diferentes este, agradecimientos de personas sí. que le están dando gracias a Dios, porque el Señor siempre continúa haciendo cosas Totalmente. increíbles. Dios Totalmente. sigue obrando, Dios sigue haciendo milagros en medio de lo que estamos viviendo. Así que no sé si querés ver algunas. Amén, amén. Estoy pensando que iba a decir algo en portugués, pero no me vino a la mente, así que voy a continuar. ¿Alguien está dando gracias a Dios? Ah, vamos a continuar. Okay, sí, dale, sí, dale. vamos a continuar. ¿Alguien está nos dando encanta, gracias? Nos encanta hacer esto, chicos. Totalmente, Somos profesionales, hay que ser espontáneos. Profesionales. ¿Alguien le está dando gracias a Dios por un nuevo emprendimiento? Qué bueno, no podemos dejar de emprender. 
aún con las limitaciones que tenemos a nuestro alrededor. A alguien está dando gracias a Dios porque está cambiando su vida. Amén. Eso me encanta. Amén. Otra persona por provisión milagrosa y alguien más por una oportunidad profesional. Gloria Amén. a Dios. Otra persona por un nuevo departamento y alguien más por trabajo. Hay un montón de personas agradecidas y la verdad es que tenemos que siempre encontrar las razones que tenemos para agradecerle a Dios. Como siempre decimos, que la gratitud es una llave que cambia tu perspectiva. Y entonces no dejes de enviarnos tus agradecimientos. Así lo podemos compartir con la iglesia en este momento cada fin de semana. Buenísimo. Sabes que estaba bromeando antes. Bueno, no fue una broma. Te dije que te necesito a mi lado, que no soy nada sin vos, estoy perdido, sos el aire bajo mis alas. Aún estando las 24 horas al día. Sí, totalmente. Juntos. Esta cuarentena me ha llevado a amarte aún meses. más. Me ha llevado a amarte aún más. Pensé que eso era imposible. Pero esta noche, en el segundo bloque, mm. esta tarde, mm. en mi prédica, uh, en Monterrey, en Buenos Aires y en Montevideo, en San Pablo, estará predicando Rafael Bittencourt. Uh -huh. Va a pregar a palabra de Dios. Muy bueno. Pero voy a estar hablando un poco de una experiencia donde realmente te necesitaba. Y voy wow. a contar una historia que va a traer recuerdos no tan buenos para vos, ah, pero okay. para mí recuerdos que me llevan a amarte a otro nivel. Me Así encanta. que tenés que conectarte esta tarde. Me voy a conectar. Muy, muy bien. Esta no me la pierdo. Sí, perfecto. Bueno, mi amor, vamos a, vamos continuar, a continuar con nuestra adoración. Así es. Un pensamiento mientras nos preparamos para electrónicamente traer nuestros diezmos y dar nuestras ofrendas. Como siempre, este momento se trata a nivel continental. Hay en Monterrey, en San Pablo, acá en Buenos Aires, todavía en Montevideo, no tenemos estas opciones, así que tranquilos, estamos trabajando en eso. Pero esto se trata de ser una extensión de la iglesia a nuestra sociedad y marcar una diferencia. Y en Mateo capítulo 25, versículos 35 en adelante, hay unos versículos súper conocidos donde el Señor dice, porque tuve hambre y ustedes me dieron de comer, tuve sed y me dieron de beber, fui forastero y me dieron alojamiento, necesité ropa y me vistieron, estuve enfermo y me atendieron, estuve en la cárcel y me visitaron y los discípulos le contestaron, Señor, ¿cuándo te vimos hambriento, hambriento y te alimentamos o sediento y te dimos de beber? ¿Cuándo te vimos como forastero y te dimos alojamiento o necesitabas ropa y te vestimos? ¿Cuándo te vimos enfermo o en la cárcel y te visitamos? Y el rey le respondió, les aseguro que todo lo que hicieron por uno de mis hermanos, aún por el más pequeño, lo hicieron por mí. Todo lo que estamos haciendo, este momento en particular y todo lo que estamos haciendo en la comunidad a donde tenemos iglesia. Estás viendo imágenes una vez más en este momento de lo que estamos logrando juntos continentalmente. Todo lo que hacemos es para el Señor. Es. No es para agradar a ningún hombre. No es para glorificar a ningún hombre o al nombre de una iglesia. Uh -huh. Todo lo que hacemos, cuando traemos nuestros diezmos y damos nuestras ofrendas para que la iglesia pueda estar posicionada en la sociedad para marcar una diferencia, lo hacemos para Jesús, para que la gente lo pueda ver a Él en nosotros. Es por eso que este momento es súper importante y una vez más, este momento es para aquellos que pueden participar. No te tenés que sentir obligado. Sabemos que esta época es diferente para tantas personas. Esta época es difícil. Este momento es para aquellos que pueden y quieren. Nada lo hacemos por obligación, pero lo que sí estamos haciendo es para el Señor. Y eso a mí me encanta porque le traemos la atención a Él, porque Él se merece la atención y no nosotros cuando ayudamos a aquellos en necesidad. Así que como siempre, vamos a ver este video que te explica cómo puedes dar y del otro lado de este video vamos a orar por tus diezmos y tus ofrendas. Contribuir online es práctico y seguro. 
Veja como é fácil. Acesse rio.sou/igrejaonline e vá até a seção que mostra as maneiras de contribuir. Você pode contribuir através de transferência bancária ou através do aplicativo Rio São Give. Obrigado por investir na vida de outros. Vamos a orar, porque a este momento le tenemos que echar fé y tenemos que confiar que cuando nosotros lo ponemos a Dios en primer lugar en el área de nuestras finanzas, Él se hace cargo de todos los demás. Así que Padre, gracias. Como siempre, gracias por la oportunidad que nos das de marcar una diferencia. Hoy te ponemos en primer lugar en el área de nuestras finanzas para seguir posicionando a la iglesia, a tu iglesia, para seguir marcando una diferencia. Y mientras tus hijos dan, oramos y declaramos tu provisión, tu protección y tu bendición sobre cada diezmador fiel y cada dador alegre. Y para aquellos que no pueden contribuir, Padre, pido que puedas cambiar su circunstancia, que puedas proveer de manera milagrosa para sus vidas porque eres nuestra fuente y eres nuestro proveedor. Te amamos y te honramos en el nombre de Jesús. Amén. Amén. Buenísimo. Amén. Buen artres. Muy bueno. Mi, mi amor, tenemos que Así es. Unos, hacer unos anuncios. Algunos anuncios para eh, anunciarles a todos. Eh, primeramente, el domingo que viene. Primer domingo, domingo del mes. Domingo del mes, 5 de julio. 5 de julio, es increíble. No lo puedo creer. Tendríamos que estar, estar en Australia. En, en Australia. Pero Por bueno. el Hillsong Conference, tendríamos. Sí, tendríamos. Pero ¿sabes qué? Estamos donde Dios quería que estemos. Amén, así es. En nuestra casa, hablando a nuestra familia continental. Me encanta, me pasando encanta, Pasando tiempo encanta. en familia, noventa y pico de días no, juntos. No. ¿Eh? Ya estamos medio... ¿Te cansaste? No, bueno, el primer domingo de julio. El primer domingo de julio. Santa ah, Cena. Santa Cena. Primer bloque. Primer bloque. Segundo, Segundo bloque. Segundo bloque tenemos lo que llamamos, vamos a honrar al voluntario del mes. Voluntario del mes. Vamos a honrar los voluntarios de nuestra casa. Sí. Especialmente en esta época que sé que hay muchos que están eh, dando los, el 100%, la milla extra. La milla extra. Y queremos honrarlos, así que no te puedes perder el segundo bloque el domingo que viene. Totalmente. Y también, bueno... Espera, eh, espera, yo tengo un anuncio ah, muy importante. Bueno, 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 bueno. El próximo domingo, en el primer bloque, Ajá. estamos trayendo desde Rosario, Argentina, ah. una predicadora <risa> increíble, ah. maravillosa. Va a estar wow, predicando en el primer el... bloque la semana que viene, Lucy Méndez. Ah. Va a estar buenísimo. Va a estar buena tres. Bueno, va a estar buena tres. Los, por, los, los brasileños no hablando, entienden. Eh, un poco de español. Es una mezcla, es una mezcla. Está pero bien. Bueno, no se entiende. ¿no? Entonces, vos estarás predicando el primer el bloque. El primer bloque va a estar buenísimo. No te lo puedes perder, no, no. Sí, va a estar buenísimo, totalmente, por fe, hay que declararlo. Amén, amén. Y en el segundo bloque estará predicando desde Australia. Ah, bueno. <risa> Un australiano con sí. ojos azules. Totalmente. Eh, muy lindo. Sí, eh, fala, Dios. <risa> Chris Méndez. Muy bien. <risa> Va a estar bueno. Va a estar muy bueno, no te lo puedes perder. Y si predicamos un mensaje donde vos haces la parte 1 en el primer bloque y yo hago la parte 2 en el segundo, sería... <risa> no, no puedo decir que no, ahora me Sería buenísimo. Esto. Bueno, vamos a ver lo que sale. Vamos a ver, vamos Pero a va a estar bueno. Pero vamos a estar, así que el domingo Totalmente. que viene no te lo puedes perder. La otra cosa también que tenemos que eh, eh, mencionar Hablar. es que el viernes 10... De julio sí. tenemos nuestra noche ADN. Próxima noche ADN. Próxima y es noche. muy importante. Nuestras noches ADN en estos tiempos más que nunca son súper importantes porque nos mantiene a todos en la misma página. Amén. Noches donde hablamos de liderazgo, cultura, Así visión, es. lo que es el ADN de nuestra casa. Así que el viernes 5, el viernes 10, 10 20 y 30 acá en Buenos Aires y en San Pablo. Y en Montevideo. Y en, Monte, en Montevideo también. Y en Monterrey, seis y media. Me tengo sí, que acostumbrar sí, a todos sí, no, diferentes. Yo no. también me estoy acostumbrando, estoy pensando, Montevideo, Montevideo, Montevideo. Y cuando querés decir Monterrey, te sale Montevideo. Cuando sí, decís Montevideo, sí. te crees una sí. locura. Pero bueno, sí. vamos a estar todos conectados. Totalmente. Viernes 10 de julio. Y lo otro también que quiero mencionar... Ah, no, ¿querés? ¿Sigo yo? ¿Qué estamos Buenísimo. hablando? Viernes 17 de julio... 
Ah, una noche sí. muy especial que creo vos. que hay muchas que están esperando. Pero vamos a tener nuestra noche de Sisterhood en línea. Uh, uh, uh. Ahí todas las mujeres en el chat van a estar aplaudiendo. Eh, así que no te lo puedes perder. Eh, perdón, en Brasil, Sisterhood. Sister Huji, a algunos no, no les gusta que digan Sister Huji, pero no sé. Ah, yo voy a hablar, yo soy pastor, voy a hablar eh, Sister Huji. Ok, 17, eh, 17 de julio, no te los puedes perder. Eh, eh, va a ser una noche en vivo a través de YouTube, sí. creo que sí, ¿no? Así que este, ahí conectate, invita a tus amigas, eh, compartí el link porque va a estar muy bueno y... Sí, vamos a ver qué Buenísimo. pasa esta noche. Algo que quiero mencionar, así nomás voy a sembrar la semilla. Um, el miércoles 15 de julio vamos a comenzar con un nuevo semestre de nuestro College Nocturno. ¿Ok? College Nocturno. Es solamente para gente de nuestra iglesia. Es interno. Te estoy sembrando la semilla. Los costos serán reducidos un poco Ok, pero el material que estamos preparando en línea se va a otro nivel. Así que la próxima semana tendremos más detalles. Simplemente te estoy sembrando la idea ahora por si estás considerando poder um, registrarte en el College Nocturno. Quédate atento a toda la información que estaremos compartiendo en la iglesia. Okay. Buenísimo, mi amor. Buenísimo. Mi pastor. ¿Qué nos pasa hoy? No sé, no está sé. todo bien. Estamos, nos estamos divirtiendo. Nos estamos divirtiendo. La iglesia es, es para... Domingo. Sí, es para la disfrutarla, no para aguantarla. Así es. Ah, muchos usan esa sí. frase alrededor del mundo, pero esa frase sale de nuestra casa. Hay que, hay que disfrutar la iglesia. ¿eh? Amén. La iglesia. La iglesia es maravillosa. Así Increíble. Es. Isso. É verdade? Verdade. Ah, eu amo quando você fala português. Ok, eu vou falar. Quando você fala português, você é muito sexy. Obrigada, é? meu amor. Muito bom. Muito bem. Nuestro pastor. Nuestro Isso, papá nuestro espiritual. Papá espiritual. Nuestro mentor. Nuestro amigo. Nuestro pastor fundador. Brian Houston hoy. Estará, estoy diciendo nuestro, sé, pero inclusivo, estoy diciendo, tu pastor, totalmente. Él estará compartiendo la palabra hoy y sé, sé que nuestras vidas serán desafiadas, inspiradas y edificadas. Así que vamos, continentalmente, vamos a poner un aplauso en el chat y recibir a nuestro pastor Brian Houston. Ah, so good to be with everyone right now. My favorite time of the week. Pressured, but not stressed. Think about that a moment. Pressured, but not stressed. Pressure is not something that's new to our generation. Right now we're living in a world that is clearly, undoubtedly heaving under the weight of very real pressures, including extreme economic pressure, obviously. And well, we're seeing it before our own eyes in the USA and, and then really around the globe. Things are so raw right now when it comes to racial things and so many people, including people in our own church right now, some of their own experiences have been brought to the fore. So there's many, many different types of pressure. And there are many people right now who are part of this broadcast or this church service who are under the weight of that pressure right now. I know in church life, the seasons of life, there's always, well, one person rejoicing over an incredible victory, another is weeping over some very real pain. And I know that's true right now. We've seen people miraculously get work when it seems the trend is people losing jobs and businesses prospering when many others are feeling the pain. And it affects our church and it affects believers, and it affects people all over the world. Of course, the Apostle Paul served God and lived in a constant atmosphere of pressure, perhaps pressure more intense than any of us will ever experience. Listen to what he says in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, and verses 8 and 9. He said, We do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, of our trouble, which came to us in Asia, that we were burdened beyond measure, above strength, Listen to that, above strength, so that we despaired even of life. Yes, we had the sentence of death in ourselves, that we should not trust in ourselves, 
but in God who raises the dead. In chapter one, verse eight in the NIV, same verse, he said, we were under great pressure, far beyond our ability to endure. Paul talks about pressure in terms of, well, something that was great. In other words, intense and something he and they were under relentlessly. And he used those words, far beyond our ability to endure. In other words, he was at breaking point. Maybe you're at breaking point. Maybe right now you think this is more than I can endure. My heart goes out to you. But listen to what Paul says in verse 10. He said, He has delivered us from such a deadly peril and He will deliver us again. On Him we have set our hope that He will continue to deliver us. Listen to that. He has delivered us, He will deliver us and He will continue to deliver us. I love His confession. He has, He will and He will continue to deliver us. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, in verse 7, he said, We're hard pressed on every side, but not crushed. Perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not abandoned. Struck down, but not destroyed. I saw one translation I really liked instead of perplexed, but not in despair. It said, Puzzled, but not bamboozled. I just like that word. Bamboozled. What a cool word. Well, if I was bamboozled right now, maybe I wouldn't like that word so much. Another translation said, struck down, but not struck out. Here's one more. As we think about pressure, listen to the pressures that Paul speaks of again for himself and his fellow apostles. He said in 2 Corinthians 11, verse 23 and 28, are they servants of Christ? I'm out of my mind to talk like this. I am more. I've worked much harder, been in prison more frequently, been flogged more severely and been exposed to death again and again. Five times I received from the Jews the 40 lashes minus one. In other words, one lash from certain death. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was pelted with stones. Three times I was shipwrecked. I spent a night and a day in the open sea. I have been constantly on the move. I've been in danger from rivers, in danger from bandits, in danger from my fellow Jews, in danger from Gentiles, in danger in the city and in danger in the country, in danger at sea and in danger from false believers. I've laboured and toiled and have often gone without sleep. I've known hunger and thirst and have often gone without food. I've been cold and naked beside everything else. I face daily, and I like this part, On top of all that, I face daily the pressure of my concern for all the churches. (laughs) Yep, even being involved in church leadership has plenty of pressure sometimes. Here's three things, and I want you to really take note, that I believe pressure will put to the test. And the first of those three things is this, the perspective test. Pressure will always test your perspective. That's why I love the Macedonian church in 2 Corinthians chapter 8. They were an amazing example when it came to financial pressure. You see, in those days, Macedonian times, in Bible times, it was a time of extreme economic crisis. It was a time in which the people were described as living in overwhelming poverty. Let's look at it. 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 1. Now, brothers... We want you to know about the grace that God has given you for the Macedonian church. Out of their most severe trial, their overwhelming joy and their extreme poverty wound up in rich generosity. I don't think you usually put those things together. Overwhelming joy and extreme poverty. What was their secret? Those Macedonians obviously had a sense of perspective that doesn't come naturally to people. To think that they could put those two things and they weld up together, overwhelming joy, extreme poverty. It's almost like an oxymoron. In other words, they gelled together, were in sync and weld up together in rich generosity. They saw no reason to stop being generous, which I find an amazing challenge. I ask myself, is my generosity subject to my situation? 
You see, I believe that generosity is a way of seeing, a way of thinking and a way of living. It's not seasonal and it's not based on our situation. And I believe the one thing that will be tested when you are facing pressure is your perspective. Sadly, at times when the pressure is on, there are people who completely lose all perspective. But there's others who allow pressure to give them perspective on what really matters, what really counts, what's really important. I I remember, as most of you do, or many of you do, the global financial crisis very well. I was reading some real life stories from the USA of people who had completely lost all perspective under the pressure of that crisis and the way it impacted them. They lost perspective in a way where hopelessness had completely overwhelmed them. It was in 2008 and these were stories I was just reading now in Tennessee, a woman fatally shot herself as sheriff's deputies came to evict her from her foreclosed home. Pamela Ross, she was 57 and her husband were fighting foreclosure on their home when sheriff's deputies came to serve her with an eviction notice. They were across the street when they heard a gunshot and found Ross dead with a wound to the chest. What was even more tragic was the couple had just been granted an extra 10 days to appeal, but hopelessness overwhelmed her. Well, these are obviously very tragic examples, but it's easy to lose perspective under pressure when our perspective is not based on a proper foundation. Paul described Jesus as the chief cornerstone. I hope that's true in our lives. Our perspective, when it comes from the Word of God, changes the way we see everything and respond to everything. And whether or not we stay planted. So I'm talking about three things that pressure will test. The first was the perspective test. There's no doubt that pressure tests perspective. And the second is the priority test. So let me start with the question. What would you consider are the non-negotiables in your life? And what are the negotiables in your life? When people react to pressure, what human nature tends to do is start adjusting our priorities according to the pressure. The pressure, not our priorities, become the head and not the tail. And it's the wrong way around. It's the difference between reacting and responding. If I respond to the challenges, not react, what I do under pressure is first and foremost, I determine my priorities and then make adjustments according to those settled priorities. So my priorities stay the same, they're the non-negotiable, but I make adjustments to my settled priorities. That's when I respond, but when I react, I start adjusting my priorities. Responding says, I've set my priorities and whatever adjustments I make are according to those priorities. I don't think there's anything like pressure to highlight what's your true non-negotiables. There's nothing like pressure to test, not what we say we believe, but what we actually believe. It's the same for me as it is for you. In Acts 5, the followers of Jesus, Peter and the apostles were under huge pressure and they were under huge opposition. They were preaching the gospel and had already seen the inside of a prison cell because of their faith. So in this chapter, Acts chapter five, God delivers them from the jail, but they were soon apprehended again. They didn't resist and they were brought before the Sanhedrin. Now, the Sanhedrin were definitely not known for their sense of humour. They were not happy chappies at all. So they're brought before the Sanhedrin and ultimately before the high priest who says, we forbade you from preaching under this name, the name of Jesus. He said, we forbade you. But listen to what they said. They showed their priorities. In Acts chapter 5, verse 29, as I mentioned, they knew their priorities were fixed and they said, we must obey God rather than man. Notice the word must, we must obey God rather than man. That word must is a compelling word. It comes from a short Greek word with only three letters in it and it has a sense of compulsion. In other words, we've got no choice. The idea was it was a non-negotiable, we must. So easy to start to adjust your priorities in the face of tough times. But if that's the season you're in right now, can I encourage you to set your non-negotiables? What are your priorities? 
what is not gonna change. Set the musts in your life and make whatever adjustments you need to make according to those priorities. That would be my encouragement to you. For many, I'm sure, there's a time of belt tightening. I mean, for our church, we just had board meetings this week. It's a time of belt tightening. (laughs) Right now, I don't have a belt on because it was just too tight. (laughs) Just got to put a little bit of humour in there. But let's not draw back on the very thing the Lord says to do first or put first. It's a priority test. If I, Brian Houston, have to make adjustments in my life, I ask myself, what would I adjust first? Would it be honouring God and putting Him first? Hope not. Maybe I'm a Foxtel subscription, but that means having to do without the sports and the news and the Hillsong channel. Maybe my Netflix. I've never watched so much Netflix as I have recently. (laughs) Or I wonder if it would just be not eating out quite as much. Well, come to think of it, that's been easy enough up to now as well because the restaurants have not been open. Will it be downscaling my holidays? I know people in our church and more than one couple who had their holidays planned out. They were heading for Italy. Well, Italy is out of bounds right now because of this virus and we pray for Italy. But I wonder when it comes to adjustments, will it be my commitment to honouring God and putting Him first? I certainly hope that's a priority that Bobby and I set a long time ago. How cool that when it comes to God taking priority, taking the number one position in our lives, He says, prove me now in this. Try me out, test me. When it comes to honouring Him, He's saying, here's a chance to put it to the test. If ever there's a time for God to be proved in your life, it's in tough times, under pressure. Prove me now in this, Malachi 3 says. See if I not open the windows of heaven and pour out such blessing, there'll not be room enough to receive it. Or as other translations say, to contain it. I pray that I'll never forget that God never blesses for containment anyway. He blesses you and He blesses me to have an impact well beyond ourselves. He blesses so that yes, the necessities in our lives can be met, but even more so that we can reach out beyond ourselves and be a blessing. Why does God even care about your finances? Some people think He doesn't. Does He really care for a moment about money? Some people would say not. Well, He cares for you and He's commissioned you to live a meaningful and a significant life. And He cares that His Word is working in your life. If we think about it practically, if you have nothing when it comes to need, then there's not a whole lot you can do. If you have a little, you can help a little. But if God blesses you with a lot, there's a whole lot of difference you can make. I look at the story and the testimony of our church and God's incredible grace and the favour He's given us over many, many years and the opportunities and the influence that we have. And I see how God has blessed us with a lot, but it also equips us to be able to do a lot, including Hillsong Channel and this and that and our worship and so many other ways that we're reaching people. Listen to the message translation because it's such a powerful promise. It's Malachi 3 verse 10. Test me in this and see if I don't open up heaven itself to you and pour out blessings beyond your wildest dreams. For my part, I will defend you against marauders, protect your wheat fields and vegetable gardens against plunderers, the message of God of the angel armies. You'll be voted happiest nation You'll experience what it's like to be a country of grace. God of the angel armies says so. If you're a kingdom builder, and believe me, there's no better time to be about God's kingdom than when you're under the hammer and under the test. I pray that we as a church will pass the perspective test with an A plus on our report card and that we will pass the priority test with flying colours too. I pray that you will do that in Jesus' name. I fully recognise that some people, their reality has changed a fair bit. And that's fully understandable. 
But you know what? There are times when amounts may change, but priorities, they stay the same. The third pressure test, I call the leadership or ownership test. It is the test of ownership, taking responsibility and understanding accountability. See, in my notes here, I initially wrote the character test, but I crossed it out because character is something that's maybe proven even more on the mountaintop. When I'm on the mountaintop and flying high, when I'm living from a place of success, that's the biggest test there is on my character. When I'm in the valley, that's when I've had to draw the most from my leadership and at times challenge my lack of ownership and quit my excuses. And that's really what I believe this test is right here. The pressure test of leadership and ownership. See, I believe every believer is called to live the life of a leader, which is to live a life of example to others, taking responsibility and stewarding well what God has entrusted you with, what God has put in your hand. Never just think of a leader as him up there on the platform or her up there on the platform. And don't think of it as that person through the screen right now. Yes, I'm a church leader, but you're a leader. Think of a leader as you, as a believer living the kind of life, facing the challenges, facing the pressure with the kind of example that inspires people to follow. It's a leadership test when pressure comes your way and leadership always takes responsibility. It all starts with leading our own life well, stewarding our own life well, taking ownership. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 17 and 18. It says, Then you say in your heart, My power and the might of my hand have gained me this wealth. And then the challenge, verse 18, You shall remember the Lord your God, for it is He who gives you the power to get wealth that He may establish His covenant, which He swore to your fathers as it is this day. It's talking about the propensity of us humans, in this case, Israel, taking all the credit for what God has done and is doing in our lives. Think about honour and credit. Honour is something you give. Credit is something you take. It's all because of me. It wouldn't be here if it wasn't for me. You know, when God does bless abundantly and people start taking credit for the position they're in in life, the Word of the Lord was now remember that it is He who gives you the power to get wealth or to get blessing or to find the perfect partner in life. You see, when we start taking it to ourselves, we become self-reliant. And it's self-reliance that takes credit and being self-reliant means you're not relying on God and trusting Him and depending on the Holy Spirit. And I'll tell you honestly, that's a dangerous place to be. Usually the person who quickly takes the credit in life for wins and successes is also the quickest to give blame when things start going wrong. If we really take ownership, we're the stewards of our lives, including our finances, and I trust God and believe God to be the provider, your provider. As long as you're blaming, there's not that sense of responsibility and that sense of accountability that will actually empower you to make the changes and move on. And the reason is because there's a sense of powerlessness and blame. It's not my fault. It's this or it's that. It's the stock market. It's, it's the situation. It's the government. It's my wife or it's my husband. You see, ownership says, my life is my responsibility. We're stewards, I understand God is the ultimate owner. I take ownership of my decisions. I can't change what I can't change, but I must change what I can. I'm talking about my own life. Those things God's called me to steward. I believe that the accountability of ownership is the foundation and the platform for you to move forward, right, wrong or indifferent. When I ride my motorbike, I ride it with that in mind. I say, any accident that happens is my fault. It changes the way I ride my motorbike. I don't presume this car will give way when he's supposed to give way. I presume that maybe he might not. In other words, I take responsibility to avoid every situation 
where an accident could happen. By God's grace, so far, so good. And I'm believing that it'll stay that way. But obviously if someone hit me and it's clearly their fault, it'd be easy to just point the finger and blame, but it might not save my life. See, if we just take responsibility, I believe somehow empowers you to make a way forward. But as long as you take no responsibility, or I take no responsibility, we blame and we excuse. That's what I mean by the leadership test. That's what I mean by the ownership test. I just believe that we need to live our lives in a way where we don't quickly blame and we don't always take the credit. You see our church, Hillsong Church in Australia, actually anywhere, we're almost 37 years old and sometimes it amazes me when I hear people taking credit for different parts of that journey. I just get amazed at what we're capable of saying to ourselves. I'm not talking about people who maybe even deserve a little bit of the credit. The people I'm talking about, well, they talk themselves into believing. Let's be honest, it's human nature. I did that, that was me. <laughs> that was my idea, etc. Don't worry about who gets the credit. I wanna concern myself with giving honour. Remember, honour is something you give, credit is something you take. And always give God the glory. To the God be the glory, great things He has done. Oh, I could sing it, but I'm resisting today. Being a good boy. Hey, by the way, I didn't get any calls when I said last weekend in church that I do weddings, I do funerals. You know, if you ever need a singer, if you ever had a birthday party, I'm, I'm available. <laughs> hey, leadership takes ownership and takes responsibility. Leadership is always learning. There's always a lesson to be learned. I'll never forget interviewing Bishop T.D. Jakes at Hillsong Conference. He's so incredibly articulate, every word that came out of his mouth left me saying, wow, I had to focus hard on thinking about the next question because I was still pondering his profound answer to the last question. But I'll never forget one of the things that he told me. He said, my mama told me that life is a university. Every day, she would say, when you wake up in the morning, make sure you go to school. She didn't actually mean go to school. She was talking about the university of life and every day wake up and learn the lessons, go to school. In other words, there's always something to learn and especially when you're under pressure. Leadership, taking ownership of your life, learns the lessons and owns it. It doesn't focus on what you can't change, but quickly identifies what you must change. You don't have to keep learning the same lessons. You know, we all, we all make mistakes, all of us. But the saddest thing is when people don't learn. When the pressure of life comes your way and you decide to take ownership, if the stresses are mounting up for you right now, here's what I want to encourage you to do as I come to an end. Firstly, take stock. What's the worst thing that could happen? Maybe that sounds like a negative, but I don't think so because usually the worst thing that could happen is not as bad as you think. In the very early days of our church, I'd get all stressed about different things. Maybe we had a bad weekend or a tough season and I, you know, I got hurt by what someone said. And I'd ask myself that question because somehow it helped me. I'd say, well, what's the worst thing that could happen? What if nobody came to church anymore? And then I'd decide, well, if that's the worst, look at the bright side. We could start again. Even now, I'm young. I'm still full of vision and I still have my health by the grace of God. I used to get so stressed out about what the newspaper said. But the big lesson I've learned is just keep trusting God. Just keep going and let God look after His church. He's very good at it. He has looked after His church and He does look after His church. The worst is not as bad as you think. Even for Job, his expectation was so low. But when he finally took stock, he saw that God was at work. He said, I'd heard of you by the hearing of the ear, but now my eye sees you. He took stock. He saw that God was at work and redemption came and God's ultimate blessing abundantly flowed. And he ended up with twice as much as you'd ever had before. There's always someone else in the world that's worse off than I am. 
and worse off than you are. In days gone by, I've been numbers of times with Bobby to Kampala and to Uganda. I even now can see a vision of the one and only time I went to the baby clinic at Watoto. So we've seen babies that have been left on a doorstep, left in rubbish bins, literally, sometimes found under a bush or under a piece of paper. And the truth is that it's the real world for some people. There's no loose perspective. Let's take stock. Maybe without wanting to downplay your pain at all, it's not as bad as you think. God's got a way of turning anything and everything around. Number one, take stock. Number two, have a plan. We speak a lot about vision in our church. I speak a lot about vision. But a vision can be out there, ethereal. Thank God for a spiritual vision. But vision is always at its best when it's accompanied by a practical plan. In tough times, you need a plan. Even an unrighteous steward in Luke lost his job. But this is what the Bible says, he resolved what to do. He had a plan. Those three lepers, men, they were in trouble. They desperately needed supplies. They were out from the camp. The camp was filled with marauders and people were out to get them. And they say, if we stay here, we're going to die. If we go up to the camp, we die. They're like, we're going to die. Let's go up. And God protected them and delivered them. They had a miraculous, miraculous deliverance. Well, number three, have a steadfast commitment that you're a person of faith and prayer. I think that's a non-negotiable. At times when you face pressure and specifically financial pressure, can I encourage you to remind yourself of the Word of God? Have it in your spirit that it's not time to draw back from the Word of God. Have it in your heart, have it in your mouth. For all the promises of God in Christ are yes and amen. Let it be so, let it be so, let it be so. God's promises are amen. The Word says, having done all, you shall still stand. Remember the words of the Apostle Paul again in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 10, where I began. Listen to it. He's speaking about the name of the Lord God. He said, He has delivered you. He will deliver you and He will continue to deliver you. Do you believe it? Can I speak it into your spirit? Can I speak it into your life? He has delivered you. He will deliver you. And He will continue to deliver you. In Jesus' Name, and if you believe it, in your home, in your lounge room, on the side of the road, in the car, wherever you are right now, let out a hearty Amen. Come on, couples, families, give me a Amen. Let's be in church for a moment. Como amo escuchar a nuestro pastor compartir la palabra. Como es que podemos vivir presionados y no estresados. ¿Por qué? Porque como personas de fe, Jesucristo es el centro de nuestras vidas. Y para aquellos de ustedes que están conectados con nosotros en este momento y nunca tomaron la decisión de poner a Jesús en el centro de tu vida, me encantaría que me des el honor de orar por vos y con vos el día de hoy. Mi amigo, Él te ama. Él tiene un plan y un propósito para tu vida. Él te acepta tal como sos, pero te ama demasiado para dejarte así porque Él tiene un mejor mañana preparado para vos. Lo único que Dios requiere de vos es una decisión. Es la decisión que te lleva a decirle que sí a Él. Una decisión que te lleva a depositar tu fe en Él. Él derramó su sangre sobre una cruz. Él entregó su vida, pero también al tercer día resucitó. ¿Por qué? para que nosotros podamos recibir el perdón por nuestros pecados, podamos recibir un nuevo comienzo y podamos caminar en relación con Dios el Padre. Es por eso 
que el sí de tu corazón le abre la puerta a tantas cosas en tu vida. Vamos, anímate el día de hoy. Decile que sí a Jesús. Comenzá una relación con Él. No importa quién sos, no importa dónde has estado o lo que has hecho, Él te ama y obra a tu favor. Quizá hoy también estás conectado con nosotros y en algún momento le dijiste que sí, pero sabes que desde ese entonces te apartaste de él. Bueno, para vos quiero que sepas que no importa dónde fuiste ni lo que hiciste, no hay nada ni nadie que te puede separar del amor de Dios. Decidí volver a él el día de hoy. Así que si le tenés que decir que sí por primera vez y comenzar esa relación, o si tenés que volver a Él y arreglar cuentas con Él, también te quiero incluir en este momento y quiero que ahí donde estés digas estas palabras después de mí. Si hay gente que te rodea, lo animo a ellos a que puedan orar estas palabras con vos apoyándote en esta decisión. Digamos juntos en voz alta, Señor Jesús, hoy abro mi corazón y te entrego mi vida. Te pido perdón por todos mis pecados y te doy gracias por tu amor y tu misericordia. Hoy te recibo como mi Señor y mi Salvador. Te pido que me ayudes a caminar contigo en cada momento de mi vida. Gracias por la salvación. En el nombre de Jesús. Amén. Mi amigo, si oraste eso por primera vez o si oraste eso para poder reconectar con Dios porque te alejaste, te felicito. En el chat hay personas aplaudiéndote, felicitándote porque es la mejor decisión que cualquiera de nosotros podamos tomar. Así que felicidades. Y mira, como iglesia, una iglesia local que ama a Dios y ama a la gente, nos encantaría conectar con vos. En la pantalla, ahora mismo, está apareciendo la información que te va a ayudar a conectar con nosotros. Esa información te llevará a nuestro sitio web donde le puedes hacer un clic al botón que dice He decidido. Haciendo eso, nos vas a ayudar a nosotros a poder conectar con vos. Nuestro equipo, te prometo, no te van a molestar. Queremos conectar. Y también te queremos avisar de algunas cosas que tenemos disponible como iglesia para ayudarte a progresar en tu fe y para que juntos podamos entrar en lo que Dios tiene para nosotros. Así que una vez más, felicidades y no podemos esperar poder conectar con vos. Bueno, iglesia, gracias por estar conectados en este primer bloque. Ahí en Monterrey, la semana pasada anunciamos que el 12 de julio volvemos con reuniones presenciales. Quiero que estén atentos a las redes sociales de la iglesia y a la reunión del domingo que viene a todas las reuniones porque estaremos hablando en más detalle de lo que tenemos por delante. Y a nivel continental, recuerden que esta tarde volvemos a conectarnos con el segundo bloque. Nos vemos bien pronto. Dios te bendiga. Jesus, eu tudo entrego.